we go. We're going to get to Luke, Luke chapter 3. Um, it's a big chapter. 38 verses is not that big. Um, we just went through a 60 or so uh, verses. That's a lot. We, then we go to 44, and then we go to 39. So this is going to be a little quicker for us as we try to get in about... And, and uh, I'm, I need to share it with you, but uh, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We try to get in about seven to eight chapters a day, as much as many as we can. And, uh, and that should be on about three videos pretty soon as we cut down and uh, four videos. And then there's going to be a lot of Bible readings. Let's get started. It's, it's, this is our new method now. This is what we're going to do now. We just... I just gave a review on the book of Acts for those of you who are going to go along in the September lesson of 2023, okay? Um, and we're bouncing around a lot. And uh, I'm very happy to say we're just about done with the book of Acts. We'll be headed to John here before, at the beginning of October, and we should finish John in, in, the, in the month of October with Galatians and Philippians and Colossians and Thessalonians and uh, that's our next job, so, uh, with John. So, and that's going to take pretty much most of the year. Now, we will bounce around and try to finish uh, John 1, 2, 3, and stuff like that, okay? As we really move and groove here, and uh, this is really a, a time to get going. Now, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. Let's get right into the Word of God here, as we greet you in the only name given amongst men, and that is Jesus, and we... Lots of hallelujah, hallelujah, Revelation chapter 19 here, where everybody's singing hallelujah, the 24 elders, the angels, and the Christians uh, who are in heaven, who are going to come back with him, who are with him at his coming, and, uh, and on white horses and all of this beautiful stuff that sounds awfully interesting. A lot of intrigue and a lot of mystery, you might say, but it sounds fantastic. Jeremiah, let's get going as we rejoice in so many different parts of our Bible, we just keep repeating the basics of the New Testament here in this ministry with the New Covenant, and we we really hammer the New Testament home. We'll probably, if the Lord doesn't if the Lord does not come back by September of 2024, we will have went through the, your New Testament at least three times, basically. Okay, probably four times, easy. So that by the time you go through the fourth time in one year, you should know your New Testament more, really good. And that's that's the goal here. Now we're going to add Isaiah and Psalm to most of our work coming up so we have more than that actually we have we have proverbs and a few other references but let's move on as we listen to let's listen to um luke chapter three and we'll probably do a couple of chapters okay we'll listen to them chapter three now in the 15th year of the reign of tiberius caesar pontius pilate being governor of judea and herod being tetrarch of galilee and his brother philip tetrarch of Ituria and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas being the high priests, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Esaias, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people ask him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. 
And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and the voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself began to be about thirty years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Janna, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Esli, which was the son of Nagi, which was the son of Meath, which was the son of Mattathias, which was the son of Semei, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Risa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salathiel, which was the son of Neri, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmodan, which was the son of Er, which was the son of Josi, which was the son of Eliezer, which was the son of Jorim, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Meliad, which was the son of Milan, which was the son of Mattatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David, which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Naasan, which was the son of Aminadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Esram, which was the son of Perez, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Thara, which was the son of Nechor, which was the son of Saruf, which was the son of Rega, which was the son of Phelech, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Selah, which was the son of Kernan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noe, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Maleliel, which was the son of Kainan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Okay, so let's take a look at chapter 3. And we have a lot going on here. I'm going to mention a few things and we're going to move on because we're not going... We're not going to we're not going to get into a whole lot of chapter four detail here, but we do have chapter four coming up in a moment. I'm glad they gave me chapter four. We're going to get to chapter four in a moment. Now, what, what I want to point out here is a few things. First of all, this of course is the book of Luke, and it is a book that has a lot of information, as all the Gospels do. Let's talk about a few things here. We want to highlight them. The first thing is is the wrath to come. What is this wrath to come to these people? Well, they're, they're the people who aren't doing what they're supposed to do, to put it simply stated. These are the people who are not doing what, they supposed, what they're supposed to be doing, what's required of them, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. So this is what's going on. And uh, John is confronting them because he, uh, he, he, he's running into what we might call the knuckleheads. The people who, who insist on twisting everything, the ones who insist on being greedy, the ones who insist on lying, and more unfortunately, it's predominantly the leaders, okay? Like in America, you might see a lot of the leaders here in the churches are just like these people here. They're the worst of the worst, and, and, and he's, he's confronting them and telling them that wrath is coming to you, and it's going to come two times. It's going to come in Titus in 73 or so A.D. 
where he's going to wipe them all out. And then, then there's Jacob's trouble, which is the, the middle of the tribulation period. Okay? The first half of the tribulation period is not necessarily considered Jacob's trouble. It's the second half of the tribulation period. Okay? Now, the whole world's going to be shaking at this time for seven years, but not necessarily Jacob. It's very interesting that they're going to be somehow um, hidden from the world's troubles to a certain degree. That's quite obvious. But we'll let that go for now. So John is talking about a lot of prophecy here. And um, he's saying in verse 8, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. You need to do something that is in line with a turn. In other words, turning means like turning. Okay. Turning means to change. That's what it means. Okay, Repentance means to change. So don't tell yourself that you don't have to change. You don't have to get your act in order because you belong to Abraham. I can kind of do what I want to do. Uh, I'm a child of Abraham, so I'm in like Flint. And then he's going to tell them that God can choose anything to serve him, any vessel he wants. Which means just because you're children of Abraham doesn't mean you, need to get in, you don't have to get in line. Just because you're children of Abraham doesn't mean that you don't have to love God the way Abraham did. You're going to have to be God's friend too. So that's what's going on here. And a lot of these people are really proud of themselves being of the, of the, of the Hebrews. That's what's going on, right? And, and John is saying, no, that's not the way we go here. You're a viper and you're a snake. Because they're looking always to pounce on people. They're looking to be violent. They're looking to steal from people. And they're all overdressed. They're like, like, well, I like the TV guys you see on TV here in America. They're, they're, that's basically what they are. They're, they're, the master calls them ravenous wolves. You know, they're, they're always looking to grab, steal, take. They're, they're, they're well-dressed Goliath. That's, that's what they are. You know, they're like Goliath, but they're just overdressed. And, you know, and, and they're hiding under these clothing, you know, and, and, they, and they got their teeth straight and they're wearing fancy shoes. You know, they drive a, a pink Mercedes or something like these guys do, but Let's, let, let's, let's get into this chapter. I, I wanted to mention his garner, which is really important here. Um, he's going to put everything in his garner here. Um, verse 17 of Luke chapter 3. He will gather the wheat into his garner, and that's our goal here. Our goal here is to be the one that's out of all, you know, out of the the good and the bad, you want to be on the good side. That You don't want to be on the bad side because the bad side, which we just uh, talked about here, the bad side people, you don't want to be a part of them. You, you want to let all that go. You want to bring forth fruits that are in line with your turn to serve God, which is you want to get your life basically, John's basically saying, you want to really get your life in order and quit playing games. Okay, in other words, we need humility out of you. We need for you to speak mercy. We need for you to speak right, talk right, act right, uh, not hoard money, you know, not be greedy, not be rich. Uh, everything that, that's wrong, you want to dump. And so, and that's what John's saying. And these guys are basically offending all the things you're not supposed to do. It's very interesting because they're the ones who are the big teachers of what you're supposed to do. Yet they're the ones who aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Okay? So... So, you know, it, it's, it, it's a hypocrite situation, you know, because you're the ones who are supposed to be the ones who are doing the thing to come, and you're going to be the ones who are going to get the wrath. You know, the, the hard heads are the ones who get the jail cells. Let's put it that way. In general, that, that's the point he's making. You know, you're, 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 the, 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 a whip is for the back of fools. Who's that, Solomon? So, you know... Uh, where are there real sad tears over what I've done? People who did the wrong thing. That's the point there. And we're here to cultivate doing the right thing so we don't do, we, we don't, excuse me, go down that path, okay? That's the point here. Now, I wanted to talk about the garner because that's the, that, that's the goal here. The goal here in Christianity is for you to be one of the wheat that he gathers, not the weeds. We, we don't want any part of all that, okay? We, 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 we want to we wanna put that... Uh, and, of course, he's going to have different methods of finding out who's who. Uh, the Lord knows how to find out who's who. He'll find out the one who wants to be humble and fear the Lord and respect God and love God and do the right thing. He's going to find out. And that's out there in the field, right? The Holy Spirit led Jesus where? Out in the field. 
Jesus made a commitment to serve the Lord and to be humble and to lay down his life for the brethren. And now it's time to go out there and see, if, is that what you're going to do? What you're going to do? So that's it. And he got let out to the field, and you're going to get let out into the field. And you just don't want to let the weeds choke you up because you don't want to be a part of the weeds, do you? No. Weeds are chopped up and put in, in the fire. But he's going to gather and garner or gather and in, in the sky. What word is that in the sky, Jeremiah? That's called cancer, in case you don't know. Uh, original Hebrew, we won't go there, but uh, that's what the word cancer means. It means gather. That's what it means. Now, that's what that word garner means. So the Lord's going to gather people who he loves and who love him, and you're out of this fire situation. Let's just let that go for a moment. And, um, and many other things, his exhortation preached uh, he unto the people. So there you go. In other words, Paul is, Paul is pushing people. He's, a, he's an evangelist. Evangelists push you. They push you to the right road. That's their job. They don't make you go on the right road. They push you. They lead you to the water, but they don't make you drink. That's the point. Now, um, let's continue. I want, I want to make a few points here. There's, there's a, a lot we can say. We'll get back to Luke 3, probably in December or January, okay? If, if, should the Lord not come back and, and poof us out of here in the love snatch, uh, we, we'll be here. Uh, we can go over a little bit of this lineage here of, of Joseph, which you might call the stepfather of Jesus, so to speak. Uh, he's obviously Judah because he went from Judah. And we have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of course, all the way to Adam and Eve, okay? And that becomes very significant because we have the entire lineage of mankind here, which means that's about 6,000 years, so that means that, that mankind is 6,000 years old because man was created on the sixth day, so to speak there, uh, in terms of creation. So that means that earth was only six days old, and here, here comes Adam, and it only took him a couple days before he went to the tree where he was commanded not to go to. So there, uh, pe people do the wrong thing quickly, don't they? That's the point. And uh, obviously the angels also went evil. So that's why angels and humans hang out together. Because both of them, as a, as a race of, of, of beings, didn't do what they were told. They weren't happy with their first home. And you should have been happy at the home you had. You should have been happy. The devil and his demons should have been happy. And Adam and Eve should have been happy with the garden. And leave the darn, as we say in America, leave the darn tree alone. You were commanded by God. Respect Father God. What he tells you to do, he's God and you ain't. And, and, and they would have been much better off just leaving the tree alone. Now Jesus comes along 4,000 years later and says, I want you to go to this tree. So first of all, leave the tree alone. Now go to the tree. So you, you're constantly being commanded as a human. As the basis for your success. That's what this is all about. For your, for your accomplishment uh, 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 to be a, a, uh, someone who is fulfilling the, the royal command of, of, of your leader, you've been told what to do. Okay, and that's, ba that's the basis for everything. And God so loved the world that he came 4,000 years after Adam and Eve sinned, and he's going to offer mankind in general a way out of going downstairs where you belong. You sinned, your grandparents sinned, so all of you really belong with the devil, and you shouldn't complain because that's where you belong. However, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to show you mercy and give you an opportunity to serve and love him and to offer yourself up as a living sacrifice, just as the master did. And that's going to be a sweet smelling savor to father. And now you have done the acceptable thing, which is to love the Lord with all of your heart. And that really basically is I'm going to be a servant. Now, let's move on. As we have the lineage here and you can see mankind going all the way back through all of the ages here from 4,000 years, of course, which we're talking about 30, 30, um, uh, this is 30 AD. So 30 Anno, anno Domino or after birth or something, whatever you want to call it. 
It's 30 years into the new thousand year period because there are 4,000 years and then this is, this is the beginning of another thousand years, right? You can call that a millennia or uh, the different terms, but uh, it's 1,000 year and that's the way God likes to deal with things, 1,000 at a time, obviously. So that's why Jesus Christ is number seven. He is the 7,000 years, right? 6,000 to 7,000. Okay, that is Christ's millennium, Revelation, okay? Now I'm going to shut down here. How much time do we have? Oh, we have a few more minutes here. I, and uh, let, let, let's stop for a moment here as we look at, we, we, we mentioned a few things here, um, separating, the, the, uh, uh, purge the floor, uh, the winnowing, the winnowing fan. That's how you separate things from that which you want and that which you don't want. That's all that is. And then, we, of course, we have the lineage here of Joseph. And there's not much mention of Joseph in the Gospels. He disappears. And obviously he's, obviously he's dead or he's gone, one of the two. Because the master told John to take care of his mother, basically, as he was doing, more or less. And so, um, there you go. But uh, this gentleman has a long lineage, and, he has, and his great-grandfather is Adam. And what's interesting about this is that your great-grandfather is Adam, too. That's the point here, that there really is no such thing as a race. A race is all in your mind. It's not scientific. That's why Hitler murdered his biology professors first. One of the first things Hitler did was he, he murdered biology teachers who taught that everyone had the same blood. When you preach a lie, you better watch out for people who tell the truth, because they're, they're going to ruin your party. Let's put it that way. So Hitler was wise enough and, uh, and had, you know, the, the, the right cabinet, you know, that told him, listen, dude, you're pushing it up with that we're superior to other people, and we have professors here who are German who say that we're all the same, we have the same blood. And everyone's getting upset. Students are being taken. Uh, the Hitler youth is starting to believe what he says. And you better get rid of that guy. So, you know, we, we need that unification and solidarity here. So, and so uh, they have some docudramas here in America about true stories about some of these people getting murdered. And then, then some of these uh, uh, rats, they went after the family of, of, the, of the professors. With really no reason to go after the family. The family was not teaching any of this. But that's how that's how brutal these people were. Um, one of these one of these professors, uh, his daughter and her fiance barely escaped, uh, you know, the Luftwaffe and all of these SS agents and so forth. Jeremiah, let's get going. So God's going to separate things, and He's going to to um, talk about um, a few other things we're going to skip uh, this time around. Um, we have a record here uh, that's very similar to, of course, the, the record of uh, the other Gospels. And as far as having harmony of the Gospels, I'm not going to get into that right now. As a matter of fact, I'm not using that many cross-references at this point. A lot of times that, that I share scriptures with you, there are other, these scriptures are also spoken of in other places in your Bible. And it's very important to talk about that periodically because, because the Bible is basically uh, repeating things that, that, that are undeniable. Look at this. Look at this lineage here. This goes back to the first human being. Joseph is being shown to be a descendant of the first human being, and every person that was his great-grandparents, you're getting every person. Which means he, he, this is the truth, or somebody is, is, is not telling the truth kind of here, right? I mean... And the point is, is that we who believe in the gospel, we know it's the truth. And furthermore, you know, it's kind of like, I dare you to, to show me that, that these people didn't exist, uh, okay, in time. You, you know, because you can't do it. And, and if I want to, I can go to Israel right now and show you that these people did exist, and they have graves and so forth. So the Bible's always telling the truth. And when it comes to this prophecy and all of this, and this is why people put their hand on the Bible in, in, in court here in America. You put your hand on the Bible because 
it's the truth, okay? So you need to tell the truth, okay? And you're not supposed to swear. They, they say swear. What they should ask you is, is uh, are you going to tell me the truth? And that's all they need to ask you. Swearing doesn't change anything. If you lie, you lie, whether you said I swear or not, right? You, you, you can be perjured in court whether you said I swear or not because you lied. Lying is what makes you a liar, not saying I swear. That has nothing to do with it. Let, let, let's move on. Let's listen to chapter 4. Let's move on to 4 here. We have enough time to listen to 4. Let's go. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elysius, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man, which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. 
And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed with him that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at four here, and we'll come right back as I take a look at four. Okay, we're going to take a look at chapter four of Luke. We'll be right back. 